Hey, what's up, Jason here. Today I wanna to talk about something non-technical. I wanna talk about getting jobs. So I got an email yesterday from Shri, it's a developer, and he wrote in saying, uh, I've been learning and teaching Unity for over two years now, and I'm trying to work on commercial projects. Most indie games I try to join usually end up stalling or coming to a screeching halt, or maybe don't even have any hope to begin with. How did you start off with actual commercial work that you talk about and what exactly do you do to get hired as a Unity developer and how can I boost my network in the game industry? So it's a lot of kind of questions all bundled into one, but the core of it is really just about how to get a job as a game developer, especially as your first time, I think. And I have a lot of advice that I usually give to people and I preface this with just the fact that everything that I'm sharing here is just from my experience, from what I've seen other developers do, what I've seen people hiring do, and how I've gotten jobs, and again, seen other people get jobs in the past doing game development in Unity and other engines. So, yes, let's start with the, the first thing that I usually recommend, which is make sure that you've built some games before. So if you're applying for a game development job, you, know, you, you send in your resume, and fill out the applications, and your pile, you know, your resume is in a stack of five, and two of those five, or maybe it's a stack of ten, right? Let's go. With it. You got a stack of ten resumes here. Five of those people have built games before. They've released something. Maybe they haven't worked in a game company, but they've they've done something there. They've they've made their own game, put it out, put it on the Play Store, released it on Steam, wherever it was, itch.io. It doesn't matter. They've released something though, and then the other five haven't. The five that have done something almost automatically have a big advantage there because they've they've shown that not only can they build a game, they can build it on their own. It's awesome, which means they they understand a lot of the workflow, not just a tiny portion of it. Um, but it also shows that they can get things finished, right? Like there are a lot of people who start games and don't finish games. There are probably ten or twenty unfinished games for every one that gets finished. Hell, it could be a hundred. I don't know. It's I'm sure it's a huge number though. You know, a lot of people start things, start projects, start games, and just never finish them. They just kind of work on it a little bit, drop it, start working on another thing, drop it. You know, and they're like, hey, it's just a hobby. I never got around to finishing it. That doesn't help too much when you're applying for a job. When when you're applying, you know, people want to know that one, you know how to do the job, and two, you'll actually get the job done. So finishing and just releasing things makes a huge difference. When I see like I said, when I see those stacks of resumes, the first thing that I look for every single time is do they have a website and does that website show what they've done before? If they do, that's the first one that I'll look at. I'll, I'll scan through them all, look like, hey, this guy's got a link right on the top, I'm gonna go check that out. Very important, make sure that the link works and it actually shows stuff and isn't like you know some crappy GeoCities page or something that just has pictures of your cat I'll make sure that it's actually relevant to the job um, and then you know really try to show off what you've done there show off the different projects that you've worked on the things that you've completed and how much you've gotten done on yourself on your own there right like if it's a bigger project you know point out the parts that you specifically felt like you contributed the most to or you know where you made a really really big impact now if you're not at a point where you think you can do that um, first I'd say you're probably wrong Right. You probably can do something. You're probably shooting a little bit too high on the project. You know, aim for a project that you can run, you know, on your phone, some little game that's just fun and relatively simple. You know, get it done, publish it up to the store, or maybe build a, a little PC game that's got some fun, interesting mechanics, but isn't like a full fledged, you know, six hour experience. It's just something small that's you know, a game. Get it done. Um the, the next thing I want to go on to, though, obviously getting a game built is important, but th there are some other things that people tend to mess up on. And uh, one of the ones that I see people I know personally fail with is they don't really practice their interviewing. And uh, if you haven't been in an interview for years or you've never been to one, it, it can be a really kind of messed up, terrifying experience. You know, a lot of times, it, they're all going to be different, but a lot of times... You go in and they're asking you weird questions that seem really irrelevant. And a lot of that is because most of the time people do ask weird, irrelevant questions. Um, and that's because they just don't know what to ask. 
But if you don't know how to kind of work your way around those things and talk to people, it makes it a lot harder to get a job. So get, getting the job, you know, getting a good resume and a good um, portfolio there, just you know, showing that you've done something helps to get you in the door, but then you still have to talk to people. You need to be able to communicate with them relatively calmly and ideally be not so nervous. I used to get really, really nervous in interviews. And then uh, one day I went on an interview that was far enough away and in an area that I really realized on my drive I did not want to move to. And I wasn't, I knew at the time, like on the drive, I'm not going to take this job. Like even if I ace the interview and everything's perfect, you know, barring some miracle, I'm probably just not going to take the job. And it was already kind of too late to cancel it. I figured, you know, what the hell, I'll go through with it, see what it's like, check the place out, and, you know, Maybe there's a miracle. But what this did was um, it relieved all that stress, right? I instantly, I got into the interview and I was just calm, didn't care. It's like, you know, and when I say didn't care, like didn't mean like I just kind of blew off the interview. I went through the whole thing, the normal process, but it was so much more relaxing. And I did a, a much better job just going through that and uh, ended, down, ended up turning down that, that job too. But after that, I started realizing that just, you know, taking job interviews when I wasn't even sure if I wanted it was still not, wasn't a bad thing to do because it's still, worst case, I was going to get better at interviewing and kind of practice. And the other thing I would do is um, look up the company that you're going to, find out a lot about them and be able to ask them real questions that are really relevant that you actually give a shit about. Like, don't, I, you know, I see a lot of people talk about like, hey, go in and just ask questions about the company. And it's like these this generic list of the same questions that every single person that's Googled this comes in and asks you. And it's not super helpful. You just have some generic answers and you figure, okay, they did, they're just checking off that part of the, hey, ask people questions thing because it's pretty common and everybody recommends it. But ask, um, instead just ask questions that are really, really relevant. Things that you would actually care about with that job. Not like the generic, like, you know, What's the worst part about working here? Or you know, what do you like the most about working here? You know, ask them about, you know, what is their, ask them something technical, especially. Like, ask them like, hey, what are you guys using for your network stack? Um, why do you go with that? Do you, you know, or, um, you know, start suggesting things lightly maybe, or, you know, opening up other opportunities and just explaining um, what you can bring while you're asking questions, I guess. I guess the point there is just, ask relevant questions if you're going to ask them. Ask good questions and really understand the job and ideally the game. And now if you're applying to work on an existing game, play the damn game. Don't go in there and say like, hey, I've seen your game. I've seen some people play it on YouTube. You know, like play the thing. If you can't be, you know, bothered to spend the half hour, or hour or whatever, just playing through the thing that you say you want to work on, you obviously don't want to work on it that bad and you're going to be pushed down below somebody else who is semi equivalent in skill set but really interested in the project cuz you know interest and drive in in these games i think plays a bigger factor than anything else right like if you're really motivated and really into the game you can make it work you can make it good you can make it you know perform well and everything else that that's not so much the hard part the hard part is getting it done um now, beyond interviewing, I, I do want to talk about um, the key way that I see a lot of people get into the game industry and the way that I got in myself, which is just through talking to people, knowing people, having friends who get into the game industry or are in the game industry, huge, huge benefit. There's, there's nothing that'll make it easier to get a game job than knowing somebody who has a game job and you know, you're on a good good relationship with them and they're looking for somebody because it's a whole lot easier to hire a friend even if you're not 100% sure the friend is the best fit you at least know that they're not a terrible fit like so you you'll know like i guess it's just when you're hiring right you know your friends better you're more likely to hire your friends and the same goes just if you're looking for a job if you know somebody that works in a game on a game that you want to you know work on reach out to them. If you just know some people who are in the game industry and you know, you're looking for a game job, reach out to them and they may be able to 
at least refer you because I mean I don't know about all game devs but I think most of us hear about openings all the time right companies are always looking for somebody they just usually don't advertise it very well there are a lot of people looking for these jobs so they're not always super public about them but th there are a ton of them out there so knowing people is important and it's also one of those things that's kind of hard right like how do you just go know people in the game industry right uh, for that i usually I, I ideally recommend going to user groups, going to the, the meetups, the game development meetups in your area. Even if you're not a game developer and you're just kind of starting out learning how to do things, go to those meetups, talk to people, you know, explain what you're doing, listen to what they're doing, make some connections, and those so often lead to jobs. I've seen more people than I can count get jobs this way just by going to these events, talking to people and I mean it's not instant it's not like they go in there they have a job the next week but they go in there they come back they keep coming you know they come four five six times sometimes and eventually they start to build up these relationships with people they're learning things at the same time so they're getting better at their skills and then somebody's hiring you know somebody that they're talking to is like hey aren't you looking for a job and then they get hired right up I've done it myself I've hired multiple people that way I've been hired that way multiple times um it's it's awesome now if there's nothing like that in your area you live somewhere where you can't just go to a monthly or weekly meetup on game development or unity development but first double check because there's a good chance that there are some around that you just don't know about um, there are a ton of them in my area but I know that's kind of a special case there's definitely a lot all around the United States and I think in a lot of other places in the world they've got quite a few of these um, but anyway, if you can't get to those, no, it's just not an option. Use things like um, Discord. Like I love the Game Dev League chats. Um, jump on to your favorite podcasts. They have, um, the, you know, they usually have community groups. They have forums or Discord channels or Slack channels. You know, um, I like to join quite a few of those and just pop in and say hello and you know, ask people questions. But I've also seen a lot of people in there kind of build up friendships and hire each other off of that too i've done that again too hired people from discord who just happened to be people that was chatting with and answered questions and like hey you seem to understand this thing pretty well happen to be looking for a job you know, and then hire them right up because it, it's it's much more about the skill and the communication than anything else i guess i guess that's kind of the key part like you've got to be pretty good you don't have to be great to get started you know, you just have to kind of know your way around and be good enough that you can handle things. But more importantly, you've got to be able to communicate and talk to people. I think that's true with most jobs, though. Like the, the hardest part is just talking to people and convincing them that you're the right fit. Um, and again, building up those friendships makes that whole part drastically easier. Just kind of makes it simplified. Get Skip right past that and go straight on to the interview or sometimes straight on to the job. Like I said, I've hired people directly from these chats before straight on to the job hired good to go and they worked out awesome so these are just some of the tips that I had I also uh, put up a quick survey just that I, that I sent out to my email list and I'm gonna post it down below too just to see um, how other people were getting jobs and what other advice they might have for Shree or other people that are interested so if you're curious to see the results of that um, let me pull it up real quick the current status of this has uh let's see 29 percent of people still trying to get their job uh you can see that the green one up there 17.6 percent a friend hooked them up which is much higher than that little orange sliver of applied online went in and got a job oh so again friendships the best but there are other ways to do it too all the other stuff that I rambled on about before that so if you're interested in seeing the updated version after I post this on YouTube where that these numbers may drastically change uh go you know put in your info and if you have any advice for free drop it below and uh if you have questions or stuff that you don't think fits into this uh this little form you know drop a comment below you know, leave, leave some questions comments whatever and i'd be happy to, to take a look and get back to them maybe we have a little discussion about other ways to help get jobs for new developers all right um thanks for watching don't forget to like subscribe get alerts and thumbs up all that fun stuff all right.